Let's head over to the UK to our colleague James Murray and his guest for a new edition of The Noodle. Hello everyone and welcome to this month's segment of The Noodle, your monthly download of all of the things that marketers around the world are noodling on. Today we're going to be talking about change and specifically we're talking about sustainability and so I'm delighted to have three experts with me in this field. We welcome Sophie Bodan, CEO of Search Engine Lilo, Anna Lungley, Chief Sustainability Officer at Dentsu, and Wilson, who is the Smart Cities and Sustainability Lead at Microsoft Public Sector in the UK. This is a topic that has a lot of attention and hype around it in the industry and media. And so I guess the first question, Sophie, is why now? Why is this so important? I think we are in a, at a very important moment. You know, I think we've just all realized that we just keep going the same way we've been. We have to change something or otherwise there won't be a planet to enjoy anymore. At Lilo, we are a search engine with substance. That means that we use the money we make from advertising to fund social and environmental projects. What is quite interesting is that actually we've seen a change in the profile of our user at Lilo. In the past, a Lilo user was someone who was already engaged in a charity, really committed to a cause. Now, actually, everybody is or can be a Lilo user. We really see uh, that people are eager to do something uh, in their, their everyday life to make a, to have a positive impact. And actually, using a search engine like Lilo is a way for them to be able to do some good along the way. But Anna, do you see this as being something which is a trend that's here to stay? Absolutely. It's a really interesting trend that we were seeing pre-COVID with increased demand for sustainable lifestyles, for example, and about 78% of consumers actually expecting brands to take a stance on social issues. And more importantly, we are seeing for the first time probably in a long time unusual alignment between consumers, government and investors all calling for change. And those numbers are really, really high. So 92% of employees in an organisation, for example, expect their, their CEO and their employer to take a stand on social issues. So this is really unusual alignment and business and brands have no choice but to respond and, and pay attention. One of the things we've seen is that COVID has been this sort of huge catalyst for very rapid transformation. And, and I think it would be easy to say, well, this, this trend in sustainability has come about because of COVID. But that's not really, it's not as simple to say that, is it? No, no, it's definitely been a trend that's been about for, for many more years. If we think back to the Paris Agreement in 2015, where we had a lot of nations to commit to some really good goals, or even the um, David Attenborough programs throughout 2018, or Greta Thunberg's protests in London in 2019. It's been a momentum that's been building, both from a consumer and from a business side. Um, from a Microsoft perspective, it's also something that we've actually been working on for quite some time now. So we're one of the first companies to bring in a carbon tax, which meant that we've been carbon neutral since 2012, which is actually really quite an achievement. However, at the beginning of the year, it was felt that those companies that can do more should do more. And we've brought out some new sustainability goals. If I just touch on one of them, which is the one around carbon, um, we stated that we were going to be carbon negative by 2030 and that we're going to remove all the carbon that the company has ever emitted since its inception in 1975. So these are really big and bold and audacious goals. There is an appreciation there that we're not quite there yet when it comes to tech and that actually that we need some innovation. So we've put aside a $1 billion innovation fund to help with that. Not every brand has that option. So what are some of the things that, that people who are listening to this could uh, take as advice on how they can start to embrace sustainability more? First, I think they can advertise on Lilo. 50% of their advertising budget will be used to fund environmental projects. So that's a, a good start. But more roughly, I would say that authenticity is really a key word. I think that each brand, each company really needs to find its own way, uh, which is consistent with its value, with its culture, to be able to embrace 
uh, this change. And that's a great message and something that I really sort of uh, agree with. And I guess the problem with some of these measures is that uh, when you do this, it's a great, uh, great for the cause, um, but not always good for business. So how do we square that circle? So actually, sustainability also is good for business. So there are studies out there that have proven that sustainability in itself um, doesn't just differentiate the, par- the brand like we talked about earlier, but also generates business opportunity. It is a change. We really need to move from a more of a linear model to more of a circular economy. And it's a change that Microsoft that we had to do as well. Um, If we think back to the iPhones and the iPods, they used to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And when the screen broke, we had to basically get a new phone. And we're now designing products with repairability built into them. So the idea is that we can use the products for longer and thereby reducing waste and carbon footprint. And that's great to hear that the company like Microsoft being so proactive in the measures that it's uh, taking in order to make a difference. On the flip side, Anna, though, we know that there are um, real risks of companies not sort of abiding or heeding this warning of, of the trend of moving to sustainability. Absolutely. Um, 64% of people will actually choose to boycott a brand if they don't agree with the stance on social issues. And really interestingly, over the last month, what we've seen in our Pulse Navigator is that 27% of millennials will actually pick up the phone and will actually call a company and ask them to change their behaviour if they don't agree with it. So there's huge consumer pressure out there. Thank you to all of our speakers for that really interesting and stimulating conversation. It's clear to me that this is a topic which is only going to increase in its importance and it's something that's going to be on everyone's agenda going forward. But the really important takeaway I think is that this is only gonna work if brands can do it in a way which feels authentic and that's true to their core values, if they wanna make it a core part of their strategy going forward. 